All right, guys. So I have already introduced the all ten lessons which I had done. So I believe after those ten lessons, you should have much better understanding about how to use microcontroller to control above electrical or electronic devices. Um. However, remember, I think the more important is well, you have to apply your skills which you obtain from those 10 lessons into your real work and to solve the real problem. So I think that's the really basic reason why I'm trying to introduce you the knowledge or basic applications about microcontroller. So always using it and uh, find the problem and solve your problem. That's the best way to know. So however, after those 10 lessons, uh, I have prepared other three experiments. So I hope we can work in together. And to solve those three questions. So the first experiment is we're going to design a petrol level monitoring system. So the working principle is we're going to use a variable resistor well, before that, so let's just imagine right now we have a petrol tank and we would like to measure in the petrol level inside of the tank. Obviously, we need a sensor inside of the tank to give us a electrical signal. It can be 4 to 20 milliamps or it can be a voltage based signal. But however, we need a sensor inside of the tank to give us an electrical signal um, but for this test uh, we are going to use a variable resistor which is already existed on the experiment board we are going to use this variable resistor to represent the signal uh, sent from the sensor inside of the tank so we are going to adjust this variable resistor and to regulate the the uh, input voltage signal, and then we are going to use an analog to digital converter to convert this variable input voltage signal into a eight bits digital signal, and then pass that eight bits information to microcontroller. And after that, we are going to use the microcontroller based on our um, preset logic to give us following indications or control purpose so I have done this test so I would like to show you this test on the experiment board okay uh, open up this all right so it's our experiment board before we download, we probably can have a look what is currently in this microcontroller. So this is the indication I actually mentioned to you before, the application of the LCD. So the first line is lab put a power station, and the second line is a timer with hours, minutes, and seconds. So right now it's 18 seconds. Now we are going to apply the STC software to download another new program into this microcontroller. Uh, petrol control. So remember when you check the microcontroller type, minimum minimal baud rate and the communication port. So it should be still COM4. I didn't change the COM port, so press the button. Now, uh, no longer need this LCD indicator, so we just unplug it. And then ask us to supply the microcontroller power. Okay, alright. So that's the. Uh, this is the program, so I probably can show you the 
web the setting as well so based on my internal logic I have already set one two three four four values so when the uh, petrol level is less than 50 percent we're going to start a pump but however I'm going to use the LED to indicate the pump start and when the petrol location is than 45 percent we're going to start the other LED which is alarm signal here to mimic alarm signal if the location is than 30 percent we're going to have a buzz which is, is mimic the uh, trip signal but however if the location is less than 50 percent we we'll start the pump and uh, well theoretically the petrol location should go back to should increasing and as long as the level uh, petrol level above 80 percent and then we will uh, stop the pump so basically this LED the first LED will be off so that's the idea that's the setting so currently as you can say it is 63 percent so if we're going to adjust this variable resistor here the one I mentioned to you before to change the analog input voltage so right now is 85 percent so we should go the other way and to de decreasing the petrol level and our target is less than 50 percent to start the pump so can I ask you to just pay attention on those LEDs which is here those LEDs so 51 50 ah, okay so you can say as long as the indication is than 50 and then we will start the first LED which represents the pump start and then if we continuously decreasing for some reasons uh, as long as it's less than 45 uh, other L <coughs> LEDs start to flash so which is represent alarm signal and if we continuously decreasing the value that is less than 30 percent we should hear beep right so okay and then as it's above 30 so the beep disappears and as long as the value above uh, 45 so the third LED is disappeared so the alarm is disappeared but at first the pump is still uh, operating so based on the setting we have to make sure the petrol level is above 80 percent before the uh, pump is stopped oh sorry so right now it's 82 percent you can see the first LED just uh, extinguished okay so if we continue increasing until 99 percent so that's the maximum indication all right so that's the first experiment I have already done but I hope you can start to write your own code and to solve this problem or to design a petrol level monitoring system all right so that's the first test probably come back to you see now it's all right the second test is even more interesting we're going to do something about gold I know um, the, this one is for Fuji gold but I know the low down region for most of our station was to apply in the English electrical gamble the working principle is slightly different because for the English electrical gamble basically uh, the PMG which is on the shaft of the machine will uh, generate three phase 
electric signal to drive this synchronized motor because we know the frequency and the speed of the synchronized mode has a linear relationship so uh, the, the speed eventually represents the frequency of the system or the speed of the machine so and that synchronized motor will drive the pendulum and eventually by using the centrifugal force to drive the distribution valve and after several mechanical amplifier stage and eventually that will drive the servo mode and drive the guide vein. So that, that's the arrangement for the in English electrical gun. But for the other uh, gobblers which was developed in 1970s the, there are more and more electrical or even digital components were involved in so this is E20 but I believe for Fuji Gable it must be applied the same sort of idea if you in view of the uh, it's called the EH Accu Accurator I think so basically well for those governors they applied a coil in the accurator to try to convert the electric signal into a mechanical force to drive the distribution valve here so and after this distribution valve the rest of the system is pretty much the same as English electrical it's just a several mechanical amplifier stage and eventually to drive the guide vane position but here is slightly different so in other words what we need to do is well we need the uh, de we need to detect the system frequency and then convert the system frequency signal into a voltage signal applied on this coil and eventually because when the voltage applied us on this coil different voltage will give us a different current and different current will produce different flux and eventually that flux caused by that current uh, current and voltage will uh, operate on the magnetic uh, flux here and then drive this distribution bow to drive this distribution valve so in other words we need to if we can use the voltage applied on this coil to represent the frequency information and then we can achieve the frequency detecting purpose and then eventually based on that frequency we are going to draw the guideline position as a closed loop so that's the idea for uh, E20 and also I believe for Fuji governors as well. Um, but however, the, the, the one or the actual design we're going to involve in is the design for the output setting of the Fuji Transtar and D electrical governor. And uh, this is the schematic of the uh, set output in electrical schematic working principle and uh, which is uh, I copied from the menu this is the menu a scan copy of the menu I get from the Fuji Fuji menu so that's the schematic drawing so the idea is we get two buttons here normally it's those two buttons are located at the remote side so the remote side will try to press those button so basically once you press this button and then you basically issue some poles and this is the AND gate so as you know AND gate so as long as the first input is one second is one third is one and then output will be one so the first input is the upper limit so let's assume we're still within the uh, acceptable range so the first is one okay because we have a not gate here so if it's uh, uh, out of the range and then we will have one here and then eventually not one will be zero so the input will be zero as long as any one is zero and then we get output 
zero. So we, we didn't waste a within the limit, the input of the end is zero and then we get output of the end is one. So the first input is one. So uh, the second is connected with the robot side, which is the pose. So as long as you press this button, you issue a high continuous high pose until you release this button and then drop back to low. So the first is high, press the button is high, and then the third input is the also oscillator, which is uh, basically it's a pose generator give you very high frequency pulse, high, low, high, low. So what actually this circuit says is so as long as you press this button and on this side will copy exactly the input from this RC oscillator. So so as long as the RC oscillator is high, you get a high signal because all inputs are one. So if the uh, RC circuit give you a low signal and then you'll get a low so just to copy the RC oscillator and then let's imagine well while you press down this button you received five poles so high low high low high low high low high low so five poles five high uh, status poles and well here is uh, basically microcontroller because it will try to detect the output of this end gate let's imagine if the origin value of this microcontroller is 1000 now because it received 5 inputs and then the um, new value inside of this microcontroller will from or change from uh, 1000 to 1005 and eventually this microcontroller will pass that information to the analog to digital converter and convert that information into an analog output. Always remember, even we said it was 1005, but from the microcontroller point of view, it just process 010101. So that's, we have to, um, sort of um, can say that 1005 must be in the binary uh, expression and on this side it's this de decreasing uh, button so which is does the just opposite function so as long as you press this button and then on the output of this AND gate will exactly copy the output of this RC oscillator and this pin will connect with microcontroller which is used to um, minus the the, uh, the inside value of the microcontroller so for instance previously we said it was 1000 and then we received five posts from the from the, the, the uh, from this pin and then the value changed from 1000 to 1005 but right now, if we suppose we we receive the three posts on this on this pin or on this side, now the inside value of this microcontroller will change from one thousand five minus three, which give us one thousand and two, and then that information one thousand two will pass to the a to the digital to analog converter and then to gave us the corresponding analog signal. So this is how this circuit works. Uh, back to 30 or 40 years ago, I suppose this was a very fancy uh, technology, but today we can just use a 50 bax experiment to achieve exactly the same function. So um, in this uh, test we're going to involve in those skills. The first is the digital to analog converter applications and this uh, converter is 8 bits based. So as we know, or if you don't know it's that matter, I'm going to give you more uh, introduction about the digital to analog converter. But 
um, this value is higher, which means the accuracy is higher. So that's the same. I would like to you just to have a little bit. Uh, so it's not a real method to be frank at this stage because well I just want to introduce you those three tests or those three experiments about those technical questions I will I will introduce you more details when we actually involve in those tests and also we're going to involve in the LED tube applications because well we're not just use Uh, the push button, which is the push button on the 